the history and background of Aramaic, brought to you by JesusSpokeArameic.com. Aramaic, the language of Jesus. In this series of lessons on the history and background of Aramaic, we have looked at Aramaic in its cultural context, tracing its use through time and down through whole world empires. Many of these video lessons have established the fact that Aramaic was the normal, everyday, spoken language across the Middle East at the time of Jesus and New Testament times. Thus, just as Aramaic was spoken for centuries, even millennia, before the New Testament, in the Assyrian, Babylonian and Persian empires, so too it was spoken during the time that the Roman Empire ruled over Israel, and so too it continued to be spoken in the Middle East for centuries afterwards, in fact, as we shall see, well into Crusader times, and Aramaic continues to be spoken today. With all this historical background and context, it should therefore come as no surprise that Aramaic was the normal, everyday, spoken language at the time of Jesus. Many further lessons will establish this fact beyond doubt. However, to bring all this evidence together, and to introduce other, more detailed lessons in this series, which we explore these issues further, in this video we shall bring together some of the main lines of evidence that Jesus, as a religious Jew in Israel in the first century AD, would have spoken Aramaic. First, let us examine what is written in mainstream, independent encyclopedias. While encyclopedias are not always correct and they are revised over time as new evidence comes to light or as new scholars revise previous opinions, nevertheless, Solomon the Wise in the Book of Proverbs tells us that in the multitude of counsellors there is safety. The law of Moses also says that at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Solomon also tells us in the book of Proverbs that a threefold cord is not easily broken. Thus, if at least three reliable mainstream encyclopedias all tell us the same thing, it should settle the matter. What then do independent encyclopedias tell us about the language that Jesus spoke? Let us examine a number of encyclopedias from various backgrounds, both religious and secular. In Wikipedia, there is a whole interesting article on the language of Jesus. Let us quote from this article. It is generally agreed that Jesus and his disciples primarily spoke Aramaic, the common language of Judea in the first century AD, most likely a Galilean dialect, distinguished from that of Jerusalem. The towns of Nazareth and Capernaum in Galilee, where Jesus spent most of his time, were Aramaic-speaking communities. Wikipedia's research is good enough for me, but let's go on to examine other sources. The New Advent Encyclopedia, which is an online Catholic encyclopedia, has numerous references all throughout to the fact that Jesus spoke Aramaic. Like Wikipedia, it confirms that Aramaic was the commonly spoken language in the first century in Judea. Now, admittedly, this is a Catholic encyclopedia, and therefore biased towards Catholic doctrines, but on neutral issues, it is nevertheless well-researched with articles which have copious references and the reasoning behind their conclusions. Let us look at a few examples. It is obvious that our Lord, who spoke an Aramaic dialect, gave to some of his disciples an Aramaic title. This verbal agreement in the Greek Gospels is all the more surprising as Jesus spoke in Aramaic. Still, considering the fact that Aramaic was the language commonly spoken in Palestine at that time, we must conclude that Our Blessed Lady's Secret was originally written in Aramaic, though it must have been translated into Greek before St Luke utilised it. Papias says that Matthew wrote the Logia in the Hebrew language. St Irenaeus and Eusebius maintain that he wrote his Gospel for the Hebrews in their national language, and the same assertion is found in several writers. Matthew would, therefore, seem to have written in modernised Hebrew, the language then used by the scribes for teaching. But in the time of Christ, the national language of the Jews was Aramaic, and when, in the New Testament, there is mention of the Hebrew language, Hebraic dialectos, it is Aramaic that is implied. Hence, the aforesaid writers may allude to the Aramaic and not to the Hebrew. Besides, as they assert, the Apostle Matthew wrote his gospel to help popular teaching. To be understood by his readers who spoke Aramaic, he would have had to reproduce the original catechesis in this language, and it cannot be imagined why or for whom he should have taken the trouble to write it in Hebrew 
when it would have had to be translated thence into Aramaic for use in religious services. Moreover, Eusebius in Church History 3, 24, 6 tells us that the Gospel of Matthew was a reproduction of his teaching, and this we know was an Aramaic. An investigation of the Semitic idioms observed in the Gospel does not permit us to include as to whether the original was an Aramaic or Hebrew, as the two languages are so closely related. However, we believe the second hypothesis to be the more probable, viz. that Matthew wrote his Gospel in Aramaic. There are many, many similar quotations throughout the New Advent Encyclopedia to show that Jesus and the disciples spoke Aramaic as their usual everyday language. Note also that Mel Gibson's film, The Passion of the Christ, was made famous partly for the fact that all the actors spoke Aramaic. That Jesus spoke Aramaic is therefore the widely accepted mainstream view. The International Standard Bible Encyclopedia similarly agrees with this testimony. Let us read its testimony. See Aramaic language for proof that Jesus spoke that language as the vernacular of the people of Palestine. The name Aramaic is given to a form of Semitic speech most nearly related to Hebrew and Phoenician, but exhibiting marked peculiarities and subsisting in different dialects. Its original home may have been in Mesopotamia, Aram, but it spread north and west, and as shown below, became the principal tongue throughout extensive regions. After the return from the captivity, it displaced Hebrew as the spoken language of the Jews in Palestine. The Encyclopedia Britannica similarly adds its testimony that Jesus spoke Aramaic and that Aramaic was the commonly spoken language in Israel at the time that the New Testament was written. It says, Aramaic dialects survived into Roman times, however, particularly in Palestine and Syria. Aramaic had replaced Hebrew as the language of the Jews as early as the 6th century BC. Certain portions of the Old Testament, i.e. the books of Daniel and Ezra, are written in Aramaic, as are the Babylonian and Jerusalem Talmuds. Among the Jews, Aramaic was used by the common people, while Hebrew remained the language of religion and government and of the upper class. Jesus and the apostles are believed to have spoken Aramaic, and Aramaic language translations, the Targums of the Old Testament, circulated. Aramaic continued in wide use until about AD 650, when it was supplanted by Arabic. Thus, the venerable and highly regarded Encyclopaedia Britannica confirms the main points which we have made on this website. And so, mainstream encyclopedias all agree that Jesus and the disciples and Jews in Israel in general spoke Aramaic, that Aramaic was the dominant generally spoken language in Judea in Israel in the first century. But let us go a step further. There are many, many independent books written by unrelated authors that prove further evidence for this very fact. These authors come from different backgrounds, different walks of life, with different religions and beliefs, yet they have all written entire books showing that Aramaic was the dominant language of first century Israel and that Jesus spoke it. These are not single web pages or a single article or a valid point here and there, but entire books on the subject each book generally being hundreds of pages long. Let us continue our study of the evidence then by providing examples of entire books that have been written on the subject. You are welcome to read these books for yourself and learn more about the subject. Note, as these books were not written by ourselves that Jesus spoke Aramaic, we do not necessarily agree with everything written in them. First, Stephen Missick has written a number of books on this subject. His books include The Words of Jesus in the Original Aramaic, Decoding the Language of Jesus, Spiritual Insights from the Aramaic, Aramaic, the Language of Jesus of Nazareth. Stephen Missick's books are well worth reading. They have been widely circulated and have received good reviews on Amazon. <clears throat> Although his views are controversial, James Trim's books the Hebrew and Aramaic origin of the New Testament also establishes the Semitic and Aramaic origins of the New Testament in its correct cultural context. <clears throat>
an older but incredibly well-researched book into the Aramaic origins of John's Gospel is The Aramaic Origins of the Fourth Gospel by Charles Burney, published as early as 1868. This painstakingly goes through the evidence to establish that John's Gospel must have come from a written Aramaic source. We need look no further than the Aramaic Peshitta New Testament text. And it takes no imagination or leap of faith to realise that if John's Gospel was first written in Aramaic, it makes perfect sense that John's other writings must also have been first written in Aramaic. John's Epistles, 1 John, 2 John and 3 John, and the Book of Revelation, which was given to John on the island of Patmos, being Christ's last and final prophetic revelation. But with just a little more research and digging around to find the facts, entire books have been written to show that it is not just John's Gospel that was first written in Aramaic. Book by book, verse by verse, by carefully examining the text of the Aramaic Peshitta and comparing it to the Greek New Testament text, we can establish that the entire New Testament, that is, every single book, was also first written in Aramaic. This has already been done. The results are available for all to see, if we would only look. First, the book, Was the New Testament Really Written in Greek? Written by Christopher Raphael Latastor, provides detailed, systematic and conclusive evidence that Jesus not only spoke Aramaic, but that the Aramaic Peshitta contains the best record of the New Testament text, and that the Greek was translated from the Aramaic. Continuing along this same line, Andrew Gabriel Roth has also written a similar book, Ruach Kadim, Aramaic Origins of the New Testament. This book contains ample evidence for the Semitic roots of the New Testament, that Jesus spoke Aramaic, and that the Aramaic Peshitta is the original and most authentic text from which the Greek was later translated. These then are a number of detailed books, each hundreds of pages long, which provide a wealth of detailed evidence that Aramaic was the dominant language at the time of Jesus, that Aramaic was the primary language spoken in Israel in the first century AD, that Jesus spoke Aramaic and that the New Testament has Aramaic origins, and specifically that it was first written in Aramaic and shortly afterwards translated into Greek for a wider audience, just as the Hebrew Tanakh was translated into Greek for a wider audience to form the Subjugant or LXX. These books are by no means exhaustive, and there are many more that could have been quoted. What we find then are all the mainstream encyclopedias agreeing that Jesus spoke Aramaic and that Aramaic was the dominant language in first century Israel. As we have seen, entire books have been written to provide further detail if you care to find out more. If you believe these things, you are on safe ground. There is a wealth of evidence backing up your beliefs. But if you do not believe these things, then you're flying in the face of all the evidence. But in addition to the books and encyclopedia articles which we have quoted previously, this series on the history and background of Aramaic provides a number of detailed video lessons which explore the key lines of argument in further detail. Let's introduce the main lessons in this series as we steadily learn just how widespread Aramaic was and the impact Aramaic has had on the New Testament and on Judaism. Many of these lessons focus on the time around the first century AD and Israel in particular because this is such a heavily disputed time. Having examined the use of Aramaic in the Assyrian, Babylonian and Persian empires, we look at Aramaic and Hebrew after the Babylonian exile and in the Dead Sea Scrolls. These key lessons establish Hebrew and Aramaic as dominant languages amongst Jews rather than Greek and look at the transition from Hebrew as the primary spoken language to Aramaic becoming dominant. We examined the Maccabean Revolt and learned that Jews rebelled against Greek domination. Greek culture, language and philosophy, or wisdom, became hated among mainstream Jews following these atrocious events. Pagan Greek practices were forced on them, and they fought back and gained the victory. Jews wanted to get away from Greek paganism and language, and back to their Semitic, Hebrew and Aramaic roots. We take a look at the idea that Jesus spoke Greek, 
and examine the historical evidence against this view. Instead, we find that while there certainly were pockets of Greek speakers, even amongst Jews, Jews as a whole rebelled against Greek culture following the events of the Maccabean Revolt. We look at historical statements in the Talmud and other writings which show this. We examine what Josephus says about Aramaic. Josephus was an important historian at the time and calls Aramaic the language of our country and our language. He says that he struggled to learn Greek and that even after years he never learned to pronounce Greek properly and that Jews did not encourage the learning of foreign languages such as Greek. We look at the Bar Kokhba revolt and the impact this has on Hebrew and Aramaic. Since New Testament times are so pivotal and important, we spend an entire lesson devoted to the use of Aramaic in the New Testament, a very eye-opening lesson which will shed light on many words and phrases in the New Testament. We learn that the New Testament in Greek actually says it is translating from Aramaic. We explore the testimony of the Church Fathers, the early believers in the first and subsequent centuries, and read for ourselves what they said about the Aramaic origins of the New Testament writings. Examining these early historical writings is very instructive. However, we also uncover the early history of the Church, the early believers themselves. Whereas in the West we think of the Church spreading only West into Europe with Paul's missionary journeys, we find that the Church spread East as well. In fact, it might surprise you just how far east the disciples went and how early and how well established the Aramaic Peshitta New Testament was amongst those early believers. It's a fascinating story, but one that is almost never heard in the West due to our bias towards hearing our own history endlessly repeated but ignoring the history of everyone else. We look at the cultural affinity that Aramaic has with Judaism. We see that while Hebrew obviously has a special place in that it is the holy language, Aramaic too is intimately associated with Judaism. It is the second holy language. One without the other would be unthinkable. Hebrew and Aramaic have grown together like two vines, becoming intertwined down through the centuries in the pages of the Bible. But Christianity is an extension of Judaism. The Gentiles were grafted in through belief in the hope of Israel. They too should have Hebrew and Aramaic as their two holy languages, and they too should rebel against the pagan influences of Greek. As we establish just how well entrenched Aramaic was in the first century, and how the Aramaic Peshitta was at the heart of the early believers, we examine the earliest translations that were made. We discover that the earliest Bibles, like Armenian, were translated from the Syriac, from the Aramaic Peshitta, and not from Greek, as we many would assume. The early Arabic Bibles, too, were translated partially from the Aramaic Peshitta. As we examine these many facets of Aramaic, like a jewel held up to the light, which reveals many beautiful colours as the light of truth shines through it, you will note just how intertwined Aramaic is with the Holy Scriptures. Aramaic is intimately intertwined with the Bible, God's Word, with the Jewish people, with Judaism, and with all the nations that had dealings with Israel. We are on safe ground as we study Aramaic. We can trust it. We are tied to a safe biblical rock. But once we leave our moorings, once we let loose the anchor, we sail adrift at sea, driven by every wind of doctrine and tossed by the wild waves of the Gentile Sea of Nations and their pagan anti-biblical wisdom. Jesus spoke Aramaic, and in Aramaic we will find rest for our souls. By contrast, Jews fought against pagan Greek influence. They rebelled. They rejected the Greek language. They did not encourage learning the language of the pagan nations around them. Jews were discouraged, even forbidden, from speaking Greek. So if Jesus, a religious Jew, and the disciples, unlearned men as they were, would have been discouraged from speaking Greek, and would have avoided learning and using Greek, how could the New Testament have been first written in a language they did not speak or understand? Does it not make more sense that the New Testament 
was first written in Aramaic and then translated later into Greek for a wider audience as the gospel spread west and Greek became the dominant language of the west. That, after all, is the pattern which we find in the Greek Septuagint or LXX. As with the Old Testament, first Hebrew, then Greek, so with the New Testament, first Aramaic and then Greek. And so, with this introduction, enjoy this series on the history and background of Aramaic. Study them well, because these issues will crop up again and again. They are at the very heart of the Bible, the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God.